Good morning, Cat Fitzpatrick here on the second week of September, and this is my second blog. It's your life, your journey. What's your story? I invite you to join me in finding out. This is a blog about casting one's own story as an adventure, of using journaling and writing practice to explore and examine, sift, gather, winnow, recast, and create. If you accept my invitation, we will set out wayfaring, far and wide. And if the conditions are right, we just might discover ourselves on the path to wayfinding. There will be many challenges along the way, but we will equip ourselves and take rest when needed. Come, the dawn is breaking. The beyond is awaiting. We are on our way. Today is the 19th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. That blue sky Tuesday morning marked the end of the American myth of invulnerability and marked the ferocious rise of many new personal and national narratives. That month, I published Kathmandu newsletter with a quote from Rudolf Steiner. We live in a time of hard tests for humanity, of hard tests which must become harder still we live in a time in which a whole host of old forms of civilization to which men still erroneously cling are sinking into the abyss. A time in which the claim insistently arises that humankind must find its way to something new. Rudolf Steiner wrote that in the early 1990s. I remember thinking even as I printed it that I could not imagine what could be worse than 9-11. Now we know climate change, wildfire and weather disasters, pandemic crises, pressing issues of inequality, systemic, systemic shortfalls on every level. And we have to wonder how, in light of all this, can the act of one person putting words on paper make any difference at all? In the beginning of his 2004 book, Buffalo Head Solos, poet Tim Seibels included this impassioned line in an entry, an, an entreaty for us to use our words to develop our voices. He was speaking to poets, but I take the liberty of including those of us exploring our own personal story in the realm of those who can use words powerfully. How else can we begin to free ourselves from the entrenched muck that is currently up to our necks? How can we learn to live if the words don't live with us? And again, that was 2004. It's just when things seem most dire that we realize we need to use our words to fashion the rescue ladder that we can slap against the wall that seems to surround us. To first break the psychological prison of our own knee-jerk reactions and unexamined limitations. And make no mistake, that psychological factor is our most formidable foe and could be ally. When I was about seven, my brother Mike grabbed me from behind and tried to shove a sour dried plum into my mouth. We were living in Taiwan while my father was working in Vietnam. We had a long, dark hallway upstairs in the concrete house we lived in. I was taken by surprise as he emerged from one of the bedrooms and wrapped his hands around my mouth and nose. The stone of the tiny fruit was painful against my pressed lips, but I would not give in. I was fierce in my determination not to give in. Finally, he released me. I wiped the traces of the putrid vinegary fruit from my lips as he quipped unapologetically and with no little accusation. You should just try it. There's so many foods you don't like. Yeah, it's just psychological, chimed in my sister Michelle. Everything is psychological, I replied bitterly. Oh, that's true, they both conceded and turned their backs on me with grudging appreciative nods. I'm not sure if I was consciously aware at that young age that my father was involved in PSYOPs or psychological operations for the CIA, but I'd obviously picked up on some of the truth of it. It's all psychological. What a blessing and a burden. It means there's so much we can actually decide for ourselves, our response to the sour plums of life, to the 9-11s. And yet the complexity of how our minds work challenges even the most dedicated neurologist and humanity has yet to master the ability to synthesize experience into a cohesive narrative that serves us rather than masters us. And that's where this writing journey comes in, this practice of writing to engage our own path in an adventurous way of transforming the burden of psychology into the weaving of our own personal story. Preeminent expert in personality theory, 
Don P. McAdams, who recently just came out on a, a very interesting book you might want to look up, asserts that people build evolving narratives of themselves to give their lives purpose and unity. Through our personal myths, each of us discovers that is true, what is true, and what is meaningful in life. As we face a world of shameless inequality and dwindling resources, we would do well to dedicate ourselves to fashioning stories that bring both meaning to our lives and hope for a troubled world. And he mentions shameless inequality and dwindling resources. He wrote that in 1995, 25 years ago. When we take up the explorations of self, we deny the power of dissolution to take us. We will not be defeated by outward attacks. We'll reach out first to ourselves and then to our well-woven story, with our well-woven story, to others and to the world. Ultimately, it is about conquering the threat of being cut off and left alone, bereft of meaning. Natalie Goldberg wrote in 2007, which was um, post 9-11, but long before today's gauntlet of issues. We are a dynamic country, fast paced, ever onward. Can we make sense of love and ambition, pain and longing? In the center of our speed, at the core of our forward mov movement, we are often confused and lonely. Writing is an act of reaching out across the abyss of loneliness, of isolation to reflect and share. And that's from her book, Old Friend from Far Away. Come, let us reach out across the abyss that threatens us. What else can we do but laugh? Come, let us reach out across the abyss that threatens us. Let us tend to the words within us. There are so many unexplored. Your path is precious and it awaits your soft step. This week's challenge is to practice using writing practice, which is defined by Natalie Goldberg as a timed exercise in which the participant keeps writing does not cross out or edit along the way and does not pay attention to grammar, punctuation, or spelling. The goal then is to lose control. Don't think, don't get logical, go for the jugular. If something comes up in your writing that is scary or naked, dive right in. It probably has lots of energy. That's from her book, Writing Down the Bones. As you can tell, I'm a Natalie Goldberg fan. And so what we'll do is just try to write, how about seven minutes? I'm gonna set a timer. I'm gonna record another separate video of me writing for seven minutes. And if you'd like to join me in this beautiful September day outside, um, let's see what happens. And we will just start with the simplest of just, um, ideas. Let's start with the color blue. The sky is blue and explore what happens. So we just begin writing without stopping for seven minutes. I hope you have a good week and do take good care.